Hi, welcome to Move or Improve with Debbie. I'm Debbie Miller, your podcast host for today. And as you know, if you've been listening for the past several months, each month I choose a different part of the country that baby boomers might be interested in retiring to. And today we're going to talk about Charlotte, North Carolina, which is a very popular active adult location. And I have the good fortune to have Nikki Pratt, who lives there, and she also works there and sells real estate there. And so she really knows the area and can answer a lot of questions for us about what's life like in Charlotte. So welcome, Nikki. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Debbie. So what do you think, all the people that you work with, what's the best thing that they like about living in Charlotte I think that it's definitely a tie between the weather and the proximity to everything. So we're three hours from the beach and we're less than three hours from the mountains. Um, But I mean, we're one of the few places where it gets super warm in the summer that still has a little bit of all four seasons as well. Interesting. So uh, what kind of uh, sports and entertainment is available there in the Charlotte area? So we have, you know, we have the, um, the football team. So we have a big professional stadium that's right outside of Uptown for the Panthers. We have what's now called, again, the Charlotte Bobcats. And so there's a big arena there for that. And then also that, that stadium turns into, you know, a hockey rink. So we have a minor league hockey team. And we also have a minor league baseball team. So we have pretty much everything covered. That sounds great. So you were talking about the weather. Uh, so what about it? I mean, how many days of sun and what are some average temperatures? Because I know a lot of people listening are either trying to get away from the summer heat of Miami or the winter cold up in uh, New England. So talk about the uh, weather temperatures and stuff. Definitely. So we're we're in that that transition period right now in between summer and fall where we can literally have a 30 degree swing on, on any given day. Like you can wake up and it can be 50 and then it'll be 85 in the in the afternoon. Um, so, you know, winters here are amazing. Like our highs are in the mid 50s and it never goes below, you know, like mid 30s. Um, and then in the spring, it's it's kind of the same thing as fall where you know, you're wearing a sweater in the morning to go outside and then you've stripped down to your t-shirt by the afternoon. Well, that's, Uh, that's okay. As long as you don't strip down to nothing. (laughs) I read where the beaches in North Carolina now allow nude bathing. Is that correct? Uh, Some of them. And and it's Uh not, it's not a prevalent practice yet. Um, oh, well, for, it, fortunately, it, unfortunately, it, yeah, the door has been opened or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, so what about the taxes there, though? A lot of people are always looking to pay lower, not only real estate, but income taxes. And just talk a, bit, a little bit about that. Sure. So you have to understand that I'm I'm originally from New York. Um, oh, so, so you really know what it's like. <laughs> right. So so to give you an idea, um, you know, my, my house was built last year and it's a five bedroom, four and a half bath home. And I pay less in taxes in a year than what my dad was paying up north for his hundred and fifty thousand dollar ranch. Oh, geez. Oh, OK. Yeah. And you yeah. probably you probably five bedroom, four bath house is probably minuscule in price, too. So oh, comparatively, for sure. Right. Yeah, for here. So the cost of living, though, how much does it actually cost on a you know a monthly basis or a yearly basis to actually live there? Like you know, doing your grocery shopping and gasoline and the nitty gritty of uh, everyday life. So groceries, utilities, and gas are all below the national average. And then as far as home prices are concerned, they're just above average. So so it, it evens out pretty well. However, like if you don't need to be right in the city, you can go right to Concord. You can go right to Gastonia where the cost of living is even lower. So then you're you're well below the average at that point. I've heard about Gastonia being a very charming place. So that's that's good to know. So what about medical facilities, though? And that's another thing that active adults and baby boomers are looking for as, as far as uh, how far do I have to go to get to a hospital in case of illness? So every suburb, every um, every suburb around the city has its own hospital. We actually have three different hospital systems in Charlotte. So, I mean, there's a, you know, there's a senior center, there's a, a children's hospital, every specialty, everything that you could possibly need is right here in Charlotte. 
Um, there are a few exceptions where I've, I've heard of people having to go to Raleigh for treatment, but those are very few and far between. Interesting. So do people mostly rely on uh, uh, cars to get around, bicycles, public transportation? How does How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So unless you live like right within that, if you're looking at a map of Charlotte and you kind of take like the, the 277 loop that surrounds what we call uptown, um, you know, there you can get pretty much anywhere. You can hop on the light rail. You can, I mean, you can even take a scooter now if, if you know, if that's your thing. Um, otherwise, you know, if you live a little bit farther out, there are public transportation. Some of the spots you can, you can hop on the light rail. It pretty much runs north and south throughout the proximity of the city. Um, you know, there are buses and everything like that. For the most part, though, if you live, you know, more than 10 minutes outside of city center, you are going to be car dependent. Interesting. So in the city center, what would you say the rough population is in that area, just so people have some way of uh, comparing it to where they live? Um, so within within the city, uh, it's about 800,000 last time I checked. And then if you if you add all of the surrounding areas, it's closer to one and a half million. OK, super. So there must be with that many people, there must be lots to of shopping and restaurants and nightlife and museums and talk about some of the interesting uh, things to do there. Okay. Yeah. I, we have, I, I mean, at least five different malls throughout Charlotte. We have all sorts of different museums spread out again throughout the city. And the cool thing that I love about it, you know, I didn't grow up in an area with museums and stuff is they do different exhibits throughout the year. So you can go, you know, and then six months later you can go and see something completely different. Um, and then, huh? So are they more like a visiting exhibit or is it permanent exhibit that you can go to whenever you want to? A lot of them are visiting exhibits from what I have seen. Okay. okay. And so then we have the Blue Menthol Performing Arts Center and a couple of different places in Uptown where you can go and see a show. I actually just went and saw a Cirque du Soleil show on ice with my husband right in Uptown. Um, and then we have, I mean, we have five different concert venues, I believe as well. Um, so I was really excited. I was just looking at tickets for Elton John and Billy Joel. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. You're big enough to be able to attract the big guys. That's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so then. What, yeah. Oh. What about microbreweries or <clears throat> even historic places or any kind of interesting, unusual things that uh, people would be interested in visiting? So we have a ton of microbreweries. That is, that is absolutely the thing right now. I don't think you can go to an event or do anything right now without it, without it being at a microbrewery. We have lots of great local, um, you know, local beers, local options. And then something that has really started popping up too is we have a lot of escape rooms. So, you know, you go in and it's, it's a timed and you have all these different puzzles and you're trying to escape. And then something else that I just found out about is that we, we have a lot of smash rooms, apparently, too, where you can now go in and, and break stuff if <laughs> <laughs> if that's your thing. I, I didn't know that was a thing until the other day when I got invited to an event next week. So oh, that's funny. I saw something on TV this morning about to relieve stress. They showed these huge rolling equipment that you can stomp down a car at a junkyard, you know, you just roll right over it. And they say that it's really good tension reliever. I thought, uh, or, <laughs> depending on who you are, but yeah, it's, it, it's, I think we have more stress than we need and it's good to be able to take it out that way. So what kinds of things would attract a, active adults? I know I'm sure you work with them quite a lot. What, what attracts them to the Charlotte area? For the most part, you know, we, we are a tech and a banking city. So what you see is a lot of people moving here. And then my, my mom and my dad actually both just did it. Um, you know, this is where their grandkids are. Yeah. And so, you know, every, everybody that I move here and I talk to, they're, they're moving here, they're relocating here because they, you know, they want to be closer to their grandparents. I'm actually meeting with a, a woman later this week and she's bought a couple investment properties. They live all the way out in Washington. Um, you know, so they're, they're just, they're finally retiring and looking to be here and be here for their grandkids. And, you know, the city has really responded to that in a great way. Like we have these active adult only communities and I want to live there. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I would hate to see what the HOA dues are on that, but they have like 20,000 square foot clubhouses with, you know, their own activities director and tennis and hiking trails and, 
Olympic swimming pools and just, it, it's so cool. Like I, I love, I love the way that our city has responded to meet this need. So in other words, if you can't find something to do, it's your fault, not theirs. That sounds like it. Cause I have a client who, uh, wanted to look at uh, communities in the Charlotte area. And I just for fun ran some numbers and I found at least 56 communities in the Charlotte local area and beyond that he was interested in. And I said, good luck with that. (laughs) He uh, he was overwhelmed with that, but he was uh, wanting to buy a place down there to be closer to uh, one of the grandchildren, and then he's buying in another place to be close to the other grandchild so that neither one feels left out. So it is it is true. Well, other than um, active adult communities, uh, are there condos, single family homes? What's the housing like in Charlotte? So that's one of those things that, again, it, you know, it completely depends on where you are in the city. Um, so we, we're mostly, as a city, we're mostly single family. You're seeing a lot of developers right now almost like building duplexes so that they don't, you know, we're running out of, out of land, right? Let's, let's be honest. (laughs) Yeah. So anymore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're, they're basically building single family homes as duplexes to, you know, escape the, the lot requirements and doing all of that stuff. Um, So that's something that we're starting to see. We definitely have in near the university area and, you know, in uptown, you know, buildings are much taller. So we have a lot of condominiums and a lot of townhomes in those particular areas as well. So does the university have uh, adult learning centers or can you, you know, take classes for an audit and learn that way? Or how do they uh, work that? Do they have any programs for active adults? They, so UNC Charlotte does and Central Piedmont Community College, which is located in Uptown, do as well. Okay, that's great. So what kind of price point are we talking about? And please don't tell me the five bedroom, four bath house can be $250,000. I'll, <laughs> I'll have to quit right now. <laughs> so so for $250,000, depending on where, where you're looking, I mean, you are getting, you know, like a 2,500 square foot, four bedroom. You're getting something really nice. Um, so that our medium home price right now is two hundred and twenty seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Oh, my goodness. OK, so, that, that's making me sick. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's that's gone up quite a bit in the last few years. I, I, I'm sure, you know, it's it's been pretty, pretty similar in many places throughout the country. You know, the last four or five years, we've seen this growth. Um, yeah. And so, I'm sure as it becomes more popular and well known that will attract more boomers because we're retiring by the thousands and uh, we have to move somewhere. Not everybody wants to be in snow up in Vermont. So uh, Charlotte sounds like a nice temperate climate to consider for sure. Well, what are some of the more popular communities, the buzzwords down there uh, that you might uh, suggest people look at? Okay. So Huntersville is something that has just become very popular in the last couple of years. I mean, and when I say popular, we've gone from a town size of about 4,000 to over 50,000 in the oh, last wow. one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. um, so, yeah. So then on the other end of the city, completely south, um, you know, you have Ballantyne. And then there are finally, I've lived here for 12 years, Debbie, I've been waiting for this probably <laughs> since I moved here. They're finally starting to develop the west side of Charlotte. Oh, good. So, so what happens right now is you go to the airport, you're staying at the hotel right down the street from the airport. There's nothing there. You, you have to take a cab or an Uber or a bus to get into town to eat. You ha- if you want to go shopping, there's nothing there. And hmm. I found out recently that a developer that's very, very popular in this area bought that land about 50 years ago and has just been sitting on it. (laughs) Well, more. it sounds like he's got a little uh, gold mine there. And so now, yeah, so now they're, they're launching and they've, they've started building and they're just, it's going 